Hello friends, I'm Rosa, welcome to the channel. So today I have a super casual unboxing of the August Fairy Loot. This is the YA box, by the way. I'm literally in my lounge clothing, just like chilling on the floor in my office, but it's so warm. I didn't want to dress up for the video, so we're just gonna do it very like chill today. It's gonna be super casual. But we have an unboxing to do. This box arrived a few hours ago. I'm so excited. I have heard. I've got nothing spoiled this time, but I've heard that the edges on the book this time are supposed to be stunning. Being told stuff like that is a bit dangerous because now I got my like expectations up, but we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it'll look beautiful no matter what. Also, I'm not affiliated with Fairy Loot right now, but I always leave a link to the websites of the boxes that I do unbox on my channel. So you can find a link to Fairy Loot's website in the description box, but enough intro. Let's get this unboxing going, shall we? Let's see. Oh, it's tight. Hmm. There we go. Okay. All right. I know what the book is. Yeah, I know what the book is. So we have ourselves a spoiler card, which I'm not going to read, but the art on it is pretty cute. I just don't want to get anything spoiled. And I want to guess fandoms because that's always so much fun. Oh, that's pretty. What is this? Wait, what is it? It looks like a, like a jewelry bag, like a travel jewelry bag, which is nice because I don't have one of those. And I've been wanting one now that I've been traveling a lot lately. Oh, it is. It is a travel jewelry bag. I don't actually know what, know what these are called. It looks like it might be fandom neutral, but I'm not really sure. Like, honestly, this could be inspired by something, but it very well could also not be. Celestial Jewelry Box. New item alert. Oh, okay. This box is perfect for travel and the safekeeping of your most precious precious jewelry pieces. Almost wanted to put precious and jewelry together in a word. I don't, it's fine. The design is inspired by our featured book of the month. Yeah, that makes sense. Knowing what book it is, I see it. And this is designed by Jess Hawk. So I'm super excited for this item. Very usable as well. Legit been wanting one of those because I always, you know those little like paper boxes that you get when you buy jewelry? I usually just put all my earrings into one of those when I go travel and it's not very, it's not good for the jewelry first of all, but I don't know. It's not a good solution, so this is much better. Okay, and then we have what looks like a toad bag. It's filled with books. Wow, this is definitely like bring me book shopping. Oh, oh that's cute. I hope there are no spelling mistakes on it. Okay, so it is a toad bag. It includes a lot of books. I see these violent delights, Once Upon a Broken Heart, An Ember in the Ashes, so the, the Ember Quartet from Blood and Ash, Strange the Dreamer, the Winter Night Trilogy lore. There's a lot of books on here, wow. I feel like there are books that they've either featured or done special editions of. Ooh, City of Brass as well. Okay, perfect for going book shopping, most definitely. <laughs> and this is, it's called Bookshelf Tote. It's designed by Chatty Nora, and it says the perfect tote to take to the bookstore. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> I agree. It features so many of our favorite books. Do you spot any of yours? I think it would be easier to say which ones I don't own. I don't have the Winter Night Trilogy. I don't have Spin the Dawn and Unravel the Dusk. I don't have Unravel Me and Ignite Me, but I do have Shatter Me. And I also don't have Morningstar, but I do have Red Rising and Golden Sun. The rest I have. Should I be concerned? Is that weird? Why do I have a lot of books? <laughs> how did that happen? <laughs> what? I don't really know how to display this, so I'm gonna put it like this and hopefully it won't fall down, but like tote bags are a little bit difficult to, to show off, so. Okay, so we have, what in the world? It says list pad. It's inspired by Romeo and Juliet. So I'm guessing it's a list pad inspired by Romeo and Juliet. I don't know what, what gave it away. Get out of- get out! Oh, come on! <laughs> Guys, it's stuck. It won't come out. <laughs> what is happening? Like, it's literally stuck. Ooh, okay. Oh, that is cute. Oh, I love these. These violent delights have violent ends. Okay. So I use these, like, I use a list like this basically every day because I- or like for weekly. I put down what because I'm self-employed, so it's just easier to take track what I have to do, I should say. Yeah, it's easier to track what I have to do throughout the week. And this one even has a checkbox. Perfect. That's really nice. It's also a little bit smaller than the one I'm using right now. Very nice. Oh, I should probably 
tell you. It's designed by Katarina Book Designs and it says this handy list pad features a quote from Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Which I actually think I own. I just haven't read it. We read William Shakespeare. I forgot which one we read in school and I just remember thinking it was really boring. I don't it's fine. Okay, don't judge me. Feel free to judge me if you want to. Gilded pin. This kind of screams, what's it, plate of prisoner? Or is it just gilded? I mean, it could just also just be gilded. I have it on this shelf by Marissa Mayer. Oh, it is, it's not plate of prisoner. <laughs> oh, it's called guild anyway. So it's, oh, turn this way. Oh, it's like uh, the book. Okay, okay, so it's a pin inspired by Gilded by Marissa Mayer. Will you please focus on it? Thank you, camera. And it's basically a hand. I will show you the cover because she is right here. So you can kind of see how inspired you see. Yeah. I don't really use a lot of... I mean, I have... Do I not have an extra pin banner somewhere that I'm not using? I'm pretty sure I do. Pins are cool. I just don't... I have a lot of them by now. <laughs> I feel like I would have been a little bit more excited about the pin if it was for a book that I really enjoyed. This one had a bit of a hard time with it now and then, but it's gonna be cool to see it on my pin better. When I get it hanging up there, I'm kind of like, I can spot the pin better right now. And I'm kind of like, is there room left on it? It keeps falling down as well because it's too heavy. <laughs> it's a problem, okay? It's a problem. But the pin is designed by No One Designs and it says the intricate enamel pin is inspired by Gilded by Marissa Mayer. So, all right, we got collectible bookmarks inspired by mythology. The last ones we got were Loki and a Kumiho and these ones, whoa, is that Anubis? I don't know the Greek gods in Greek. Why, why did I just say Greek? I'm an Egyptian. <laughs> I just kind of like stumbled out of my mouth. I was like, wait, what did I just say? <laughs> yeah, I don't know the uh, Egyptian gods that well, but I have no idea what's going on on, on on this one over here, but they do look gorgeous. Like, look how beautiful that is with all the arrows or whatever they are. No, they're not arrows. Don't know what they are. We're gonna figure it out in a second, but they look gorgeous. Is that not Anubis? Is that not the one with the... Dude is ripped as well. What the heck? <laughs> anyway. Okay. Oh, no, it's not. I don't know who's who. Wait. Artist by Grace Z... Grace Seward? Grace Z. Heward? Grace Z. Heward. And they are Anansi and Apate. Yeah, I'm not good with Egyptian gods. I have no idea who that is. Hold on. This is quickly gonna turn into some kind of lesson or something. Um. Oh no, spiders. Oh no. No, 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 no. This is confusing because there is actually a West African god called Anansi and he's like a spider. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not who this is supposed to be. Okay, but at least this is supposed to be Apate who's the Greek goddess of deceit. That doesn't surprise me. So we do have a Greek god. I'm pretty sure the other one is supposed to be Egyptian though, but I can't find information on him, which I don't understand. It just keeps showing up as a spider. So I don't know. I don't know how to fix that, but she is the daughter of Nyx, who is the goddess of night, and also Erebus, who is god of darkness. So that's who she is. However, Anansi right here, we, we're having some issues with. <laughs> I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna sort it out. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm very confused. <laughs> it's weird because the only one I can find is Anubis with a like a dog head. What? Did they write the wrong name in the spoiler card? Am I thinking about this too much? I'm moving on. This is taking too long. I don't get it. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, so we have our tarot cards. I am not sure who this is, but something tells me it might be Shatter Me. Um simply because there's a, a a blonde dude and a black haired girl that's that's pretty much it i've not read shatter me yet this is like a shot in the dark but oh they're from only a right oh they're from only a monster so this is juliet aaron and um no is it other no this is aaron and this is nick yeah i think what throws me off is that they're wearing very modern day clothes and they aren't really an only a monster so Anyway, but those are tarot cards. Juliet is Justice, and the two boys are the Wheel of Fortune. Love these tarot cards. Beautiful. The art is done by Ars28. Why did I call her Juliet? Her name is Joan. My gosh, everything is going so well. I just rolled my eyes at myself, by the way. <laughs> Time for the book. Enough guessing games. I feel like my... Ooh, orange. Okay. I feel like my streak has been completely ruined by our god friend right here. I don't know who it is. Okay, so we have a bookmark 
looking like this fits with the spoiler cart. We also have the author letter which looks like this on one side and then if you want to read it you can do that right here. I prefer to do it after the video so I like the art. It's nice. It's very soft. And as for the book, Orange Edges. Interesting. Okay. We have ourselves, wait, what? Oh, fairy scoop. <laughs> I was like, what is that? We have ourselves Violet made of thorns and, oh, they're ombre. Oh, I thought they'd be stenciled. I mean, they're nice. They're just, I don't know, I thought they'd be stenciled. <laughs> See, this is what I did to myself, expectations. I literally just said that at the start of the video. They are nice though. Super nice color combination. So we have the orange, it kind of reminds me of like a sunset, but more, I don't know how that works, but it does. Yeah, definitely a sunset. Yeah, and then blue indigo up here, super nice. Also matches very well with the cover that also looks like there's a sunset going on. I think it might be an exclusive cover. Is the original, what kind of color scheme is it? Is it not an exclusive cover? It does have an exclusive cover. I don't remember what the color scheme on the original is. I think it might be more like purple instead of blue. I'll put a picture of it right there. Hopefully I can find it this time. I wasn't able to the last time. So you can kind of compare if you want to. Yep. And then we have, oh, a signed book plate. We also, oh, that's cute. Wait, I was not a big fan of like art printed on the hardback, directly on the hardback until this year. I think what changed my mind might have been Blood Cyan, which we got in April. I just really liked how the art looked with the sprayed edges. Same situation this time. It just looks very nice. Although it's like the opposite, like it's the other way around here, which kind of is a little bit confusing. Like it would make more sense if the orange was up here and the dark was down here, you know? But it's very cute. This, this is a vibe. Like it's definitely a vibe, you see? With the buildings and it's like dark and like what's mysterious a little bit very gloomy but cozy at the same time we have art on the end papers which matches the art on the author letter looks very nice yeah it has this like soft feel to it it's very nice and then on the back we have our lead guy i think looks like our lead guy he also matches the dude on the spoiler card actually so oh it looks like he's kind of looking up at her like she's standing at a balcony and he's like looking up at her. Oh, I love this like blurred plant here as well. Adds some dimension to it. Okay. Anyway, so the book is Violet Middle Thorns by Gina Chen. I do believe that it's her debut. Could be wrong about that. But it says there's always a price for defying destiny. Very exciting. I will be reading this book next month as well. I'm super excited for it. But it says Violet is a prophet and a liar. Influencing the royal court with her cleverly phrased and not always true divinations. Honesty is for suckers like the oh so not charming Prince Cyrus who plans to strip Violet of her official role once he's crowned at the end of the summer, unless Violet does something about it. But when the king asks her to falsely prophesy Cyrus's love story for an upcoming ball, Violet awakens a dreaded curse, one that will end in either damnation or salvation for the kingdom, all depending on the prince's choice of future bride. Violet faces her own choice, seize control of her destiny no matter the cost, or give in to the ill-fated attraction growing between her and Cyrus. Sounds a bit like an enemy's lovers, is all I'm saying. Violet's wits may protect her in the cutthroat court, but they can't change her fate. And as the boundary between hatred and love grows ever thinner with the prince, Violet must untangle a wicked web of deceit to save herself and the kingdom, or doom them all. So it is a fantasy debut. It's about a morally grey witch, a cursed prince, and a prophecy. It says, perfect for the fans of the cruel prince and serpent and dove. I always take that with a grain of salt, because I feel like comparisons are not often super correct, but I'm very excited to be reading this this month, or next month, September. The the cover also gives me like, kind of like early fall vibes as well. I don't know what it, or like late summer, maybe. A mix in between. The flowers are kind of not very fall-like, but there's something about the colors, you know. Maybe it's the vibe. I don't know what it is. Anyway, favorite item in this box? Probably the jewelry case, to be honest. Like, I've been wanting one of those so badly, and I just never found the one that I wanted. This is actually really gorgeous. Yeah, I would most definitely be using that whenever I go travel now, even if I'm just going to Copenhagen. Perfect. But I'll get a lot of use out of that. I'll get a lot of use out of the bookmarks, the 
little pin will look gorgeous on my pin banner. And it's always fun to collect uh, tarot cards as well, the tote bag. We'll see if I get use of it if I ever go to a bookstore again. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that because let's be real, I'll probably go to a bookstore again, but <laughs> yeah, it's overall a pretty, pretty freaking good box. Yeah, I'm very happy with it, so. Anyway, but that's all for this unboxing. If you want to see more unboxings from me, I do have an Illumicrate coming up sometime soon. It actually includes two boxes this time. And I think my Alcrate is also on its way, so we have lots to unbox before August is over. So if you're interested in that, definitely stick around. And if you're new here and you like 24-hour readathons, weekly vlogs, TBR videos, wrap-up videos, and you know all the booktube stuff, definitely also consider sticking around by clicking on the subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the thumbs up. But that is all I got for you guys today, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye! Oh, you know, you know